Let's get a look at, the, at a race that's being watched closely around the nation, the Republican Senate primary. No surprises here. Ted Budd declared, declared the winner of this race pretty early on. And Queen City News Chief Political Correspondent Emma Withrow is live in Davie County with a likely very happy Bud Camp tonight. Now, Emma, you just heard the congressman speak. So what did he have to say where you are now? I could hear uh, just the cheers behind you. You could be able to hear the energy in the room there. Yeah, guys, Congressman Ted Putt definitely seemed relieved that this primary is finally over. You know, it was a tough race, lots of negativity, lots of low blows from these top polling Republicans. But I got to say, his speech took a totally different turn when he talked a lot about unity and positivity and uniting after this contentious primary. Now, Bud says he wants unity and made really nice comments about his opponents, going so far as thanking them all for that they've done in North Carolina while in office. And so now that Bud's going up against Beasley, he's going to need as much Republican support as he can get, and it's expected to be a tight race in November. Take a listen to some of his speech. Primaries are awkward moments, and yes, friends, they really are, because you have to run against people that you might have supported in another setting, in another day, in another race. But I want to take a moment, I want to recognize those men and women right now. Governor Pat McCrory, I thank you for your service to our state as governor and for your time as mayor of Charlotte. You made Charlotte better, and you made North Carolina better. Now, it's important to note that this win for Congressman Ted Budd wasn't just a win for him. It was a win for former President Donald Trump, who endorsed him, and that conservative super PAC club for growth that spent millions of dollars in advertisements in this race. And it's safe to say that their investment definitely paid off. So now Budd just has to make it through this general election in November without any major hiccups, and maybe he'll be able to take on Beasley then. But for now, reporting live in Bermuda Run, Emma Withrow, Queen City News. Emma, thank you so much for your live report there, and of course, letting you know we have political experts in-house. We're going to break down a lot of these races, but right now we're getting through all the results that are coming in. Let's talk about a race that the former Charlotte mayor and North Carolina governor wanted to win. Pat McCrory is at his watch party at Sullivan Pub. Yeah, very disappointing night for Pat McCrory, and that's where we find our Morgan Francis. And Morgan, the news came in quick that Ted Budd was declared the winner in this Republican primary. Many now asking, what does this mean for Pat McCrory? Yeah, Brian, that really is a question. Just a few friends and family you see here behind me, but it got pretty quiet pretty quick. And he gave his concession speech about an hour ago. But Pat McCrory, he's been in politics for more than 30 years. But tonight he said that there's more to life than politics. But something tells me that he's not done with the game. He said that if someone in the Republican Party gave him a call, that he would answer the phone. But the fall from the governor's mansion um, still kind of stings here. And you can't help but wonder if there's still some political scarring from the 2016 bathroom bill debacle, or if President Trump's endorsement of Representative Ted Budd really carried him across the finish line. Tonight, McCrory congratulated Ted Budd for the win and the nomination, but also t talked a little bit about the direction of the Republican Party. We've got to do an evaluation of our party. And I want to let you know that you have leverage in this race coming up. You have leveraged because our party's got to recognize you as being common sense conservatives like I am. You are a common sense conservative, and I think in this Senate election, you've got to demand common sense conservatism, maturity, and professionalism that we should demand of a U.S. Senator because the U.S. Senate is a place for wisdom and courage and problem solving now more than ever as our economy is being destroyed by the terrible policies of our current president and vice president. You can tell that the loss still stings, but he is still here talking with family and friends here at Selwyn Pub. We asked McCrory what the next step is for him, and he said that he's actually headed to Lake James with his family. We also asked him if he's still going to host his radio show, to which he said, and I want to quote this, I played the game, I know the game, that was a fun part of my life. We'll see what happens in the future. Alicia, back to you. 
Morgan, thank you for that. You can really see just the looks on people's faces in the room behind Morgan, Brian, as to kind of that somber mood right there. And Pat McCrory right there over Morgan's right shoulder. Mm -hmm. You can see him there. Yeah, Morgan, thank you for your coverage. All right, let's head to Raleigh. Let's go to the other side of this race. The night went as expected for the primary with Democratic nominee in the U.S. Senate race. Cherry Beasley moving on to the general election after receiving more than 200,000 votes. It's a night to celebrate, but she says now the hard work begins. Queen City News reporter Will Lewis is live in Raleigh at the North Carolina Democratic Party event tonight. Yeah, and Will, Sherry Beasley, she talked about facing off against the Republican nominee Bud here. What did she have to say? Well, you know, Brian, uh, first of all, Sherry Beasley thanked her family, friends, and volunteers for helping her win the primary election. Then she turned towards the general election and Representative Ted Budd. She says that Budd will not focus on the needs of the people of North Carolina. She says North Carolinians need someone to govern and to govern with faith, hard work, justice, and integrity. Now, this race was called for Beasley 20 minutes after the polls closed. And once it was announced, Sherry Beasley won the room here at the North Carolina Democratic Party event, erupted in applause. Beasley told the crowd that she talked with people all over the state, and she's heard about students worried about leaving college with major student loan debt, people skipping daily medication because they can't afford refills, and people who are one health emergency away from losing everything they own. Beasley says she knows the general election will be tough, but she is ready. I'm not telling you that winning will be easy. It's going to take a lot of work. I've never backed down from a tough fight, and I won't back down now. I am a woman of faith. My faith teaches me that where there are challenges, challenges produce perseverance and that perseverance produces character, and character produces hope. Governor Roy. Now, Governor Roy Cooper also spoke to the crowd here, and he says tonight is the night to celebrate, but tomorrow the hard work begins. He says that they need everybody's support to get Beasley to Washington, D.C., because she will help give a voice to people here in North Carolina. We're live in Raleigh. Will Lewis, Queen City News. All right, well, let's talk about that hard work leading up for this race now in November, bringing political expert Khalif Rhodes, and of course, uh, former leader of the Charlotte Black Political Caucus. This race was called very early for Bud. What did you take out of that? I, I took it as a mixed message. I, I, I think North Carolina voters on the Republican side showed that a Trump support was great in that race, but in the Cawthorn, in race, the Cawthorn race, for sure, it didn't give them the support that we looked for. So I didn't see um, it going that way that quick, but, I mean, the numbers showed. McCoury couldn't even pull Mecklenburg County by more than 1,000 votes. So Polling held true uh, it, throughout it this whole race. It, it did. It pulled true the whole time. Let's look ahead right now to November. you got Bud versus Beasley. It's going to be another uh, heavily spent race for the Senate. Here is North Carolina could decide the balance of power again in Washington. It's definitely echoes of the Kyle Cunningham race last or two years ago. By all means, $280 million, uh, highest ever race. I think we'll be heading to something like that. They're both going to be jockeying to figure out who can get those unaffiliated voters at $2.5 million million voters that are sitting out there. I think both of them tonight even made messages to hope, to unity, trying to make their early pitch to those voters that are in the balance right now. A pitch that we're going to see from both of those guys, uh, uh, Beasley and Bud, leading up to November. For heavily, sure. heavily, heavily, yes. heavily on air.